Hi, I'm Nick Federoff. Today on Things Green, have we a show for you. It is about flowers and vegetables. We get to talk to the people that actually develop all these plants from seeds to cuttings to sets and a whole lot more. And on top of that, we're talking vegetables. Some of the newest varieties, things that you can get right now and things that you can't get until next year, right here on Things Green. I don't know if I've ever shared this with you before, but one of the things I love about vegetable gardening in particular is the fact that you can get this little itty bitty tiny seed that you can barely see. You put it in the ground, you start watering it, and then all of a sudden it starts growing. And it like, when it breaks through the soil, it's picking up this big clot of dirt. And you wonder, how can something so dainty create mm -hmm. something so beautiful mm -hmm. and that's what I'm witnessing right here look at these I things know. clearly we have something in common because I really really find that unbelievably awesome too so we have yeah. ourselves some spectacular vegetables from Pan American Seed Company we've been doing a lot of work on breeding vegetable varieties that are suitable for a home gardener and uh, market farmers for the past 10 years or so now so what we have on display are a kind of a combination of some existing varieties that have already been available, as well as some brand new exciting ones. Yes, now, yes, right yes. off the bat, I am drawn to these gorgeous flowers. Aren't they amazing? The and this is Patio Baby. So this variety produces loads and loads of kind of egg-shaped fruit. You harvest them um, maybe when they're about three inches long, oh. cut them in half, throw them on the grill. They're phenomenal. This does equally as well in a container as it does in a in the ground. So therefore, we don't have to worry about staking it or anything, right? Absolutely not. not. Over. Nope. You, it, the only thing that you're going to have to do is routinely harvest it because this uh. thing pumps out the fruit so much that it will start getting weighed down with fruit if you, you don't. You know, and that's it. actually actually something people have to remember when they're growing vegetables. Uh, hand picking and and taking and, and, and harvesting those vegetables that's an important thing for stimulating oh the growth well, like you were saying before if you're putting so much energy into growing these things you might as well get to reap the rewards and harvest them regularly and if you don't have room for them on your dinner plate give them to your neighbors well I gotta tell you right now I think I'm gonna nail this thing before the day is over because that's calling my name I know and it's growing like <laughs> as we speak too this is martini cucumber it's a novel unique white skinned slicing cucumber um, it starts out at this lime green color. As it grows, it'll continue to either stay light green or even get a lighter cream color. Really, really mild and tasty. So something like this, great for salads. Absolutely. Uh, can you eat them by themselves? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Okay, They're not good. bitter at all either. So uh, That's important because a lot yes. of people, when you miss you, end up missing your watering, then they can turn bitter on you. Exactly. So that's a, that's a good thing to know. Yep. Uh, how big are those going to get? Those get about five to six inches. Okay, so we have a little bit longer for yep, that one. Yeah, yeah, You'll have to come okay. back tomorrow maybe. <laughs> oh, you know what? I see a few down here that are also bigger too. So we might find one for you. Uh, okay. I love the setup over here. This looks like our pepper area. It is our pepper area. We've got some new pepper introductions this year that are really, really exciting, unlike anything else, um, starting with candy cane red pepper. It is the first ever striped snack pepper. So it starts out dark green with these cream stripes on it. As it'll mature, it'll start turning orange with the stripes in it. When it's fully ripe, it'll be a solid red. So I like to harvest it right in that in-between stage because you're getting all those different really cool colors and then you're also getting the sweetness that is associated with a little bit more of a ripe fruit. Okay, now that's important. You said the word sweetness on the Scoville scale of zero to my head's gonna blow off. This is completely sweet. Okay. You're zero. Oh, you're right. Yes, zero. yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> like your head is not going to blow off. Okay, today. so we have these different stripes over here. My concern is, is that or, or, I don't know if it's a concern. It could be kind of neat. Are there different flavors through that, or is it just you know, an ornamental thing more than anything? It's something. It, it certainly has a really nice sweet flavor. Oftentimes, um, a standard green pepper can. I think it can be a little bit bitter um, mm. when it's uh, when you eat it. I like to wait till it ripens up a little. 
Um, this is a variety that I find to be a little bit sweeter, so maybe that's one taste difference when, it, when it's still at the green stage. But I still like to wait till it starts blushing a little, because okay. that's when the real sweetness and the flavor profiles come. Okay, what's up with the spaceship over there? Oh my gosh, so this thing <laughs> is unlike anything else either. So this is Mad Hatter. We just won an All-America Selection Award for it. This is a capsicum baccatum species. This is not your standard pepper um, species. It's uh, native to South America, and historically these varieties do not really perform well in northern regions. They were grown in high altitudes, warm climates, and they didn't really perform well here, but they have amazing shapes as well as flavors. So well, Mad Hatter was actually bred to perform well in northern regions. So it'll perform well all over the United States. It's got that really cool spaceship disc-shaped fruit to it. It's actually sweet too. So occasionally there'll be a tinge of heat near the seed if it's grown in really hot conditions. But if you just want to scoop those out, stuff it with cream cheese or whatever else you'd like to um, put on your peppers. You're this is downtown great. after that, huh? Big exactly. Speaking of downtown, uh, here we have something that's kind of interesting. You've got containers and you've got, you've got plants here that aren't giving you any kind of vegetable. You're absolutely right. We need to eat our salads too, correct? Yes, we do. So people want more than just lettuce in their salads nowadays. And so we have a whole line of Simply Salads, which are multi-seeded pellets. You get a pellet and each one of them I happen to have some right here. Okay. There's numerous different seeds. So you're either going to get the same variety in there, or sometimes we have mixes too. Okay. And so what you can do with those, you take, in a, in a bowl this size, you take five of those pellets, plant them, water them in, and you get a nice full color bowl that you can have uh, harvest salads from for many, many weeks to come. Nice. So well, for what it's worth, I was already grazing on this stuff. I saw there. you earlier. I didn't want to say anything. Well, for what it's I was worth, trying to be polite. I, I, I'm going back there right now. Wow. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay. Well, you go have at it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I don't know why you had me drink all this, but I'm full. <laughs> I'm glad you're <laughs> hydrated, but I really need the bottles because we're going to be planting up a container today. These make great spaces at the bottom of the container. I thought you said that we were going to plant these so we can watch them grow. <laughs> no, we're not planting bottles, but we are going to make room for the soil so that roots can establish a little bit faster and you're not so heavy when you're moving it around on the patio. I like that idea, but what about the tops? The tops you can leave on because we want to keep the structure of the bottle. We don't want it to collapse too much. We want to make sure that there's a lot of good airflow and drainage at the bottom of the container. Okay, you know when I'm looking at this right now, I could also see us putting down next uh, possibly some uh, coffee filters just to kind of keep it cleaner as well. It's like a natural fabric to go right inside. That's perfectly yeah. great to uh, make sure that it keeps a little bit cleaner too. Alright, what's the next step? Uh, before the plants go in, you got to put your soil in, but don't fill it to the top. You don't want to top off too high. I would go for about an inch off the top from the tip of your finger to your first knuckle. That's a good indication that the you have The water's got to stay high. someplace. Exactly. That's yep. pretty. We'll backfill with some soil. Now, I got to tell you something, we're touching all this soil. It's a dirty job, isn't it? Well, you're gonna, you don't have to worry about your manicure if you get a no-chip manicure. They'll do a special gel, and then you'll have a great garden manicure all the way through the season. I know, I've never even heard of that before. <laughs> this is perfect for gardeners that don't mind getting their hands in the dirt. Oh, nice. Well, maybe you should show me how to get one of those. I'll come with you. Okay. Hey, Nick, what's going on? Oh, look at these. These are so gorgeous. <laughs> this yeah. is ridiculous. Tiny little okra in a tiny little pot. Isn't it great? Man, oh man. Is this how big this monster is going to get? That's, you know, the mature fruit's going to be a touch taller than that. And this plant's going to get to about three feet. But that's it. It's going to produce a lot of a lot of fruit on a tiny little plant. Wow, I sure love that idea. Yeah. Jambalaya who are come, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We're heading to New Orleans. <laughs> hey, you guys have a really fascinating thing that you're doing here. And I love the, the progression of what's going on. There's a story to be told. Absolutely. Burpee's been around for about 141 years and we've decided that we're going to bring a little bit more clarity to the plant program at retail. We're starting to develop collections of plants that are, tar that are um, plants targeted for small spaces, plants that are just absolutely amazing for breeding breakthroughs, and then people who like to play with their food, we have a foodie collection also. Okay, well speaking of amazing food, yeah. uh, you know gardening is an amazing thing in itself. Uh, anybody can do it. Uh, people Absolutely. enjoy it to the nth degree, and you guys are you guys are really making sure that we we get that experience of it being amazing. We want to make sure they're successful, not only with good flavor, but also you know solid disease resistance that we can bring naturally into the plants. Um, yeah, and this is a great example. You picked it up right away. 
Gold Standard Pepper. This is an amazing pepper because it's got resistance to potato virus Y, to tobacco mosaic virus, and also bacterial leaf spot. Some of the most common problems that home gardeners will have but it also gives you a gigantic yellow blocky bell pepper. Oh, I love it. You guys pack so much information on here. Thanks it's for- so cool. Yeah, we really, really did with this new look in the, in the pots and the tags. We were able to put the information that, that gardeners are looking for first and foremost. So we can say, this is a sweet pepper or this is a hot pepper, or a slicing tomato, cherry tomato. Here's the variety. That's what it's supposed to look like when it's ready to harvest. And oh, by the way, it came from Burpee, so you know it's going to be good. Well, for what it's worth, I love the idea of how big these labels are now. You st <laughs> stick them inside there. I yeah. can read them now that I'm wearing glasses. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, another thing that we have, uh, I don't necessarily want to call it a challenge, but you know, space is getting limited nowadays. And, Absolutely. And I love the idea that you guys are accommodating. And I have to tell you, you know, breeding is just so out of my I don't even comprehend that. You know, someone says, I'm gonna make a tomato plant that's a little bit smaller. Yes, yeah. yep. I, they had a dream and they made it come true. They yeah. find the right crosses and, and they make it happen naturally. That's how all of our varieties come to market. Nice. But yeah, you know, we talk to our breeders about needs in the marketplace and we try to get them to react with varieties that are still gonna give you a big high yield, whether you're planting it in a small container on your balcony, or maybe you've got a much smaller garden than you used to have, but you wanna harvest a lot. So the, the, the Space Savers collection is really about heavy producing, great tasting varieties that work under that, you know, smaller space conditions. One of the things I have taught people for years is the fact that you can create and do something, you know, called bumper crops. You know, you do a little bit now, then a little bit later on and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm seeing kind of a pretty fascinating trend here where <laughs> you've got these things, I mean, these plants are just packed with your fruits and vegetables on there and but you exactly. got flowers that are coming out exactly you know it, it's the difference between a determinate plant that sets all its fruit at once and an indeterminate variety like this pepper that sets re almost ready to eat ready in a couple of weeks and then you're going to have a few more weeks my thing is if you're going to have somebody commit to three months of growing in a container they better be able to harvest for for six weeks or more so we look for varieties that in our space savers collection that have a very long harvest window because nobody wants to pick three tomatoes and be done and that's why it's important to read that label for the determinant indeterminate absolutely absolutely okay yeah. well i see something over your shoulder over there that kind of uh yeah kind of piques yeah. my interest our, our Especially this thing right there. This this plant right here is kind of talking to me. Look at this thing. Look it at is. all the flavors that are in there. Yeah. What's going on here? So this is the Foodie Collection, and this was actually one of the first products that we introduced in the Foodie Collection. There are three basils in there that allow you to try three different flavors of basil. We've got a sweet Genovese, we've got a red Reuben, we've got a lettuce leaf type. It, again, it's people who want to have an experience with their food. Maybe they don't want to try everything in three separate pots. This gives them a chance to pick up all three flavors in one pot. It actually grows that way. Yeah, yeah, it's three different seeds in the same pellet. Okay, is this going, is this one gonna be more dominant than this one, or this one, or this kind of grow all the same? You, there shouldn't be any dominance. You should be picking this and eating and snacking yeah. at it all the time. You're gonna be pinching and taking the... <laughs> Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point. Now this one right here, <laughs> yeah. oh, tell me a little bit about this guy. I love this. So a couple of years ago, we started noticing shishito peppers on restaurant menus. And that's, you know, this is the kind of foodie experience that's fun because shishito peppers are typically flash fried with a little oil, a little salt. You throw them in a big bowl and serve them to your friends and one in 10 is gonna be hot. So you get to play pepper roulette with your ah. friends and see who gets the good one. <laughs> Making a game out of it, but also it's just a delicious little appetizer. All right, little pepper roulette. Exactly. I'm gonna have to remember that. Yeah, yeah. I love that. All right, so these varieties here, these are more for the person that wants to, to experience their palate. And Absolutely. Are, no, okay, because of that, is, are they harder to grow? No, not at all. I mean, that's greens fees for getting into the Burpee program. It has to perform, so that's not an issue. We've done all of that trialing. What we what we have here are different flavors, different textures, different, you know, just di a different tomato experience, a different eggplant experience that people who really appreciate their food are going to have fun with. Well, I'm going to go experience that okra over all there. All right. That's what I want to do. Sounds good. Calling my name. <laughs> She actually screamed? Yeah, this is our new Color Rush Pink, and my daughter is a freak for pink. She loves pink, and the Color Rush Pink is her favorite. We drove up to the facility, and she literally screamed, I gotta get my picture with that variety. There's a whole series of pink books, 
and Color Rush Pink is the best pink out there on the market for the garden and the landscape. That is really cool. Now this particular plant right here obviously makes a good hanging basket, but what about for the landscape? Color Rush is all about breeding varieties that are tough for the landscape, weather tolerant, heat tolerant. So we've got the pink, the light pink, and the blue. It does make a great hanging basket. And over here you can see a combo where we've put the Color Rush Blue in with our best verbena in Durascape Pink Bicolor. This is an AAS winner. That's all American selection. So 75 trial sites confirmed this is the best verbena on the market for consumers in the summer heat. So nice. that combo with the petunia and the verbena makes a killer item for a summer garden for a consumer. So literally what you guys are doing here is a, I mean, it's a total color rush. Isn't are you getting it? a rush <laughs> off the, the, the exciting plants we have here? It that's is. what That's what we're about is creating a rush for consumers with exciting new items. And this one here now, if you like a nice trimmed beard look like I like, you want a compact type of Mia. But if you like this look, you want the new solar tower Ipomoea. I've never seen this inside before. This is the first climbing Ipomoea ever. We've got like a tunnel of love here. Let's go. I won't look propose the, to you, well, but I we can go through. That. No, but you have these lovely uh, heart-shaped leaves. So, you know, the inspiration could be there for someone. Correct. The contrast between the lime and the black, really outstanding color. Over here, we've got it in uh, like teepee shaped trellises in monopots, but I really think the consumers are gonna love to use this in mixes. Mm -hmm. So you put the, the trellis solar tower Ipomoea at the back and then fill in with some other beautiful flowers. So Creates a beautiful look. Okay, so we're using the, uh, the trimmed variety for your pots, and if you wanna get wild and crazy, then you go to the larger one. Correct. How sure. tall is this gonna get? As long as you give it structure, it's gonna keep climbing. No. I mean, it may be not Jack and the Beanstalk style, <laughs> but it's gonna climb pretty high. Okay, very good. All right, now, uh, Last time that we met, which was some time ago, uh, you put me in a sea of lantana. Here we have a sea of lantana as well, but there's some characteristics about this that I just don't understand. So this is the first sterile lantana on the marketplace. We say bloomify, it will not multiply. Okay. <laughs> what that means for the consumer is when a variety of a lantana can't create seed, it's just going to keep flowering. When lantanas create seed, they tend to, to cycle out of color and lose flower power this cannot physically create seed. So there's a red and a rose in the Bloomify Lantana. All right, I have a strong feeling that you're pulling my leg over here. <laughs> well, let's, uh, we can look down in here, but really we had the University of Florida certify this for us sterile. So an independent university did the scientific research to prove that both of these varieties cannot create seed. And when I, what I think is happening in the genetic of the variety is because it really wants to like replicate, it can't. So it just keeps throwing flowers, hoping that it's gonna create a seed. It Man. cannot create a seed. You, you know, you live in a world over here that is just fascinating. You call this work? I watch plants grow for a living. Can you believe that? I tricked somebody into thinking that that's a job. Oh man, oh man. But I, I have to tell you, I am so appreciative of it because it literally opens up a world to for, for me as a consumer to, to create and have that palette increase. Now we look to, to add more colors to that because we, we're looking for consumer solutions so that they're successful in the garden and they have the full color palette. So we'll add more colors to this. But in the meantime, we have a lot of exciting products that can add color to a consumer's garden. Okay, now speaking of adding a lot of exciting, excitement to all this, look at these salvia, they're just gorgeous. So this is our vigorous blue salvia mystic spires, and this is a great drought tolerant item. I have this in my yard. I only need to water it uh, two times a week for about 10, 15 minutes on a drip line. Great drought tolerant product and great summer performance. And everybody's looking for a true blue, horticulture blue, right? Very difficult. That's very difficult, but this salvia provides it. Okay, now, now why, why are these leaves bigger than this one though? Well, this is a compact variety of mystic spires. We call it Misty because he's, he's tinier and it makes a great blue salvia for mixed combos like this. So if you need a garden salvia, you'd want mystic spires as a, as a consumer. But if you're a gardener with limited garden space and you're just doing it in containers and you want to mix your salvia with other great items like your Endurscape Red or our Solar Power Ipomoea, you want the Misty because it's more compact. So therefore, it's really important to know when you're talking to your nursery person that say, look, I have these conditions, how yeah. can you help me? Sun, shade, what height are you looking for, what application are you putting it into? And then they can direct you to the right product for that, now, for great, that part of the garden. Now, great, great go-to plant, Osteospermum, Hey, everybody knows and loves daisy flowers. If you ask a kid to draw a flower, what do they draw? They Daisies. draw a daisy. Yeah. So this is a brand new spreading daisy. It's an osteospermum, and we've got purple, white, and pink, and it's a trailing osteo. 
Right now, most of the osteos grow up. So think about your porch. You could put this up by your door in February, March, or April when it's still cool outside at your house. That's the product for you. Then switch to summer and switch over to the salvia. Now your uh, your osteospermum that you see out in the we'll call it the wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are these as tough as those? These are usually tougher. They usually flower a little bit earlier, and we're trying to breed in heat tolerance into these genetics so that they'll last it a little longer for that wild maybe that you see out in the wild. You do see date osteospermum out in the wild, but those usually go out of flower really quickly. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, see if I can't get a job here because I want to watch flowers grow too. <laughs> I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks. One of the things that I've often taught is the fact that whenever you're planting any kind of plant that's grown in the container, you never want to plant it further than the, or deeper than the soil, than it comes out of the container. But that's not necessarily true for every plant. Right, it's solid advice for most of your trees and shrubs, but when it comes to tomatoes, burying the plant a little bit deeper is actually gonna save you time and labor in the future. Okay, now we see a lot of activity going on yeah. on this particular plant, yeah. okay? So just burying it, and these things are gonna be like this, and it's oh, no, oh, no, 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 come on now. <laughs> <laughs> no, so the cool thing about tomatoes is they'll actually produce roots all the way on the stem wherever it's in contact, but you don't want to bury the leaves. I would go ahead and prune these leaves off, and okay. you could bury this almost all the way to the top. You're going to have a lot more roots, you're going to have the plant deeper down, so it's going to be able to get more moisture, get more even fertilizer that's going to save you time and tips in the future. And I think that's actually kind of cool, the fact that the roots will be out like that. Now, here's the thing. These are brittle plants. These are brittle. So there's a lot of information out there where they take them, they say to bury it deep and then bend it up. Yeah, uh, it's not my favorite way to do it, but yeah, I've seen either. plenty of people do that. No, I'd prefer to just dig a little bit deeper in the soil. It's yeah. probably been tilled in the garden anyway. And I've actually done this before to, I mean, you get a hefty, hefty stalk on there. Absolutely, it builds a tree to support the plant and you can, it, the stronger the plant's gonna be, the heavier the fruit it can hold. I sure like that idea, thank you. You bet. Hey, I'm getting some good plants in my shop in here today. You definitely are. Indeed. Okay, I have to tell you something. This right here is pretty exciting. We have Pentas, don't we? We do. You've picked a great one here. This is Lucky Star Pentas, some new breeding that takes out the cycling in Pentas, which is a great pollinator-friendly plant. You want to bring more butterflies to your garden, but it'll go green. It'll lose those first flush of flowers, and you're waiting weeks and weeks for the next round. This one doesn't do that. You'll see some of these are starting to bud up and the next gen is coming right behind it. And you call that cycling. Cycling, almost like a wave of um, ups and downs between green and color. It comes in so many different colors. We have six this year, mm -hmm. from the very vibrant violets to a very velvety red. Oh, look at that, I didn't even see this. Gotta put it in the cart. Okay, yeah, definitely. All right, so we have this now. How in the world are they able to take and put these colors like this? This is just fascinating. This one took about six years to breed. It uh, goes with a lot of the breeders' goals on making it easy for consumers and then cutting down on that cycling so that they can have a really great product at retail stores. Okay, so when this cycling process happens, uh, are we taking these or are we, are we removing the, the flowers on these? No need to deadhead. Those just kind of wisp away in the wind. You can see these are ready to go and the next generation coming up will just fill in fast. So one and then the other like that, so we have a constant- Continuous blooming. Kind of bloom on there. Mm -hmm. well, what are the light requirements for the Pentas? Full sun for these, because you want to bring them uh, into the garden, uh, but they do very well in containers, so great for patios and balconies too. Okay, now do they get easily root bound? No, no, those are, those are great in containers so that you won't have to worry about um, the plants not performing for you. Okay, wait a minute here. You guys are pulling my leg over here. I've <laughs> How in the world are you gonna be able to grow these together? There's too much competition going on here. Not at all, these play very well together. We've been able to mix with our plug and play combos, tested and trialed uh, collaboration between edibles and ornamentals. So here you'll have a patio friendly Roma tomato with a really great red petunia and parsley. So you've got a whole little Italian bistro right here in, in one pot. Nice. We've I also mixed this. some eggplants with your basil and a great purple petunia, marigolds and tri basil with um, Cantina Heat has a sweet pepper. All right, so I want to get back to the scientific aspect of this. Sure. So we have plants that play together, so the competition aspect isn't there, and they're like companion plants. Companion plants completely. You won't need to replot any of these plants. You'll take it in the garden center just like this and enjoy it all season. They're uh, dwarf habits 
or they're uh, not competitive tomatoes because sometimes a tomato can grow up to five feet tall or take over a plant if it feels threatened at the roots. Okay, so all these are dwarf-like varieties? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, dwarf or compact, but okay. with a great uh, yield as well, so you'll be able to harvest throughout the season. Okay, what about staking something like this? Do we have to stake it? or Not necessary for these because okay. they stay naturally that way. Okay, and then I would imagine the plants themselves are going to help support to keep everything up anyhow. Yep, they'll, they'll intermingle and do a really great job with uh, keeping it looking pretty and then also edible too. Okay, so what I'm seeing here so far is that I've, I've got myself some um, tomatoes, I've got some eggplant, I've got basil. Mm -hmm. So if we get a couple of these things, we really are talking a salsa party. Very, very <laughs> much of an entertainment or an experience for your patio. Nice, I sure love that idea. And I really like the idea that you, that you incorporate the color within that because sometimes, I, I, all right, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to have to sometimes a vegetable garden can get kind of ugly. Right, you, they're, they're relegated toward the backyard. Yeah. We want to bring them up front. Um, the red tomatoes, as they start to ripen, will complement very well with the marigolds. The eggplants will turn nice and purple. The peppers will look great as well. Okay, okay. Speaking, Speaking of, of peppers. Peppers over here. <laughs> I get to munch down on these, don't I? Ah, don't touch that one. That's a hot pepper. It's more for an ornamental. The great part about this is it's drought tolerant and will give you fruit until the frost. But if you're looking to eat one, and keep it indoors, we've got snackable peppers too. All right, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you made a mistake. You said these were indoors. Go ahead and repeat yourself. No, they, they were definitely indoors. They were bred <laughs> in Denmark where the light is a lot less than we get out here really? in the States. So they've been conditioned to not need as much sunlight as a traditional okay, pepper. Okay, now here's the problem. I'm gonna have somebody calling me up on my radio show saying, I wanna grow peppers indoors. And they're going to say, well, I heard of it before. What am I supposed to do? Yep. I'm going to be so tongue-tied, it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, we're retraining how you're thinking about your edibles. No kidding. For the folks who have only a balcony or a smaller space, they may not have time to place them in the dirt, but they still want to enjoy fresh snacking. Those are great options for you to put right next to your sink. Well, now speaking of hot options, look at these over here. We got a beautiful petunia rainbow thing coming on over here. What's going on here? This is our spreading wave petunia section. Um, wave has been around for 20 years and making gardens beautiful with the easy spreading color. Um, so you can see a lot of the different uh, styles. There's a wave for just about every taste and every occasion. Okay, now the colors are really fascinating to me and uh, what's the story behind that? We are mixing to the max with all of these colors and textures. So you can have a very large shaped petunia matched with a smaller flower for some dimension, but they're all going to perform very well. And then of course the color combos are really working for you. Yeah, I sure like the idea of the fact that they are bigger and smaller. You get almost like a 3D effect. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. What about care? Carrot is, is super easy for the Wave Petunia brand. No need to deadhead. Um, give it a little bit of plant food every 14 days to continue that blooming. And then in the heat of the summer, if it starts to get a little leggy because it's trailing, you just have to cut it back a bit to encourage more growth in the center. Well, I do have one problem. My shopping cart's not filled, so let's go, go fill it you. up. <laughs>